Good morning and a special welcome to Christchurch Study Park here in Birmingham. If it's your first time visiting us or seeing us on screen, a special welcome. Yes, a special welcome to those of you watching from home. Uh, it's great to have you with us. If you don't know who we are, you can look us up on our website. We have a new website address, uh, it's christchurchb29.org. So any questions or if you want to find out more about us, just go to the website and you'll find out uh, all there is to know about us, or we want to let you know about us anyway. But as the service goes on this morning, you'll get to know us a little bit better. We have Susan Haynes, who is our speaker this morning, and Susan, we're looking forward to what God has to say to us through you. Um, let's start with prayer, shall we? Let's ask God to bless our time together. Our Father, we come to you this morning as people who need you. We thank you that you've looked after us during this past week. Thank you that you brought us here this morning. And we ask that you will be with us here. Speak to us through your word. Lead us close to Jesus this morning, we pray. Help us to hear you speaking to us and help us to obediently respond to you, we pray, our Father. In Jesus' name. I'd like to say I'm looking at a, a sea of people wearing masks. It's not quite a sea, it's more like a, a small pond. Uh, but you're all very welcome. It's great that we're all, well, it's sort of great that we're all wearing our masks. I'm allowed not to wear one just while I'm standing up here. And it's great that we do wear our masks to keep one another safe. There is another sense in which we can come to church wearing another kind of mask. The mask that says, I'm okay. I'm fine, I'm coping. That sort of mask that we perhaps wear during the week as well, that says, yes, I'm doing fine, I'm doing well. And deep inside, we know that perhaps we're not coping, perhaps we're not doing well. And now is the time to be honest before God, to say to him, there are things in my life that I'm not coping with. There are things in my life that, yes, I'm ashamed of. There are things in my life that I want to get rid of. Let's have a step period of quiet when we do that and then we're going to have a time what's called confession where we bring to God the things that we want to get rid of, the things that we're not proud of. So let's just sit quietly for a few seconds and bring to God those things that we need his help with. We don't need to wear any masks in his presence. He sees right through them anyway and he loves us loves us absolutely all the same. So let's just be quiet for a few seconds. Before we say our confession, let's remind ourselves more completely why it is we've come here this morning. Let's say together the words that will be appearing on the screen. Let's say together. We've come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek the forgiveness of our sins. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. And so let's say together our confession, which will also appear on the screen. Lord God, we have sinned against you and done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing. Renew the right spirit within us. Restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God's word says in the letter of John, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins. And cleanse us, purify us from all unrighteousness. And so 
and the authority of God's word would say, May God who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins, and make us holy to serve him in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm pleased to welcome Susan Mann, who is going to explain something of the new series that we're going to have in the next few weeks. Good morning, everyone. This week we're starting a new series called Being Church in a COVID World. We're going to look at some of the biblical pictures and references of what church is and relate that to our current situation of living in a pandemic. We hope this series will nourish us as we feed on God's word that will be strengthened and built up as church by reflecting on our identity and purpose together and that we'll feel reassured at this strange time that God is with us and can continue to be worshipped and glorified. You never know, we may even be challenged to find new ways of living out our faith together. So here's what our series will look like. Today we'll start by looking at being the family of God. Then we'll explore being the body of Christ, the building of Christ, the army of God, the bride of Christ, the flock of God, and the ambassadors of God. I'm looking forward to this new series, and I hope you will be too. Yes, I'm looking forward to it as well, and uh, I hope that in the weeks ahead I'm able to listen to those talks and uh, build up a knowledge of what God is saying about us as his church, whether we're here in the building or whether we're at home. Uh, God as things he wants to tell us, to help us grow in him. So let's move straight on to our Bible reading from another Susan, Susan Moll, and then over to Susan Haynes again to open up God's word to us. Our reading this Sunday is taken from the contemporary English version of the Bible, Romans chapter 8, verses 15 to 17. God's Spirit doesn't make us slaves who are afraid of him. Instead, we become his children and call him our father. God's spirit makes us sure that we are his children. His spirit lets us know that together with Christ, we will be given what God has promised. We will also share in the glory of Christ because we have suffered with him. Thanks be to God. So, as I've uh, said, we begin our series today by looking at church as the family of God. Now, family can be a trigger word. It will mean different things to each of us. For some, a source of comfort, security, lovely memories and fun. For some, a source of pain, disappointment, guilt and grief. And for most of us, a mixture of the two. I just want to acknowledge that first of all and say that there is no perfect family and to recognise that some of us have been hurt. As we look at this picture of the family of God, I pray that God will help us to see afresh how loved we are by him and to recognise our place in his family. As our reading this morning has pointed out, our relationship with God is not a master-slave relationship. He has chosen us to be his children. The underlying word for this is adoption. He has adopted us, given us full rights as children. We are his heirs, so we will receive our future inheritance from him. We're adopted by grace. We walk with him in the ups and downs of life and we have received the promise of eternal life with him. 
This father is not a distant authoritarian figure, but the word used for father is Abba or Daddy. It's a close, personal relationship, perhaps such as one seen between a trusting toddler and an adoring daddy. As 1 John 3 verse 1 says, How great the love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. Another picture the Bible gives us of this is in the return of the prodigal son in Luke 15. When the, the son returned to the father, the father didn't glance up from his newspaper unmoved or angry with a, oh, you're back, are you? No, he had been actively waiting and watching out for him. Then when he caught a glimpse of his son still far off, he was filled with compassion, threw off all dignity and ran down to greet him throwing his arms around him and showering him with gifts to welcome him home. Each one of us is a child of God. The Holy Spirit in us reassures us that we are his, loved and precious to him. As we're all his children, this means that we've been brought into God's family with each other. Families are not perfect and vary enormously, yet we all have our ideals of how things should be. In 1992, President Bush famously stated his desire for American families was for them to become more like the Waltons and less like the Simpsons. For those of you too young to remember the Waltons, they were a big fictional family on television perhaps sometimes too sickly sweet, shown in the 1970s and 80s, but set in the 1930s and 40s, known famously for their long-winded goodnight calls. Good night, Jim Bob. Good night, Mary Ellen. Good night, John Boy. The Simpsons are a more modern, chaotic family, usually in some kind of trouble. Actually, I see good qualities in each of these two families, in terms of loyalty and devotion to each other. Families do not necessarily live up to the rosy picture painted by the concept of two parents and 2.4 children. I always feel a bit sorry for the 0.4 of a child. <laughs> but they are a whole range of relationships which inevitably include complications. Families in the Bible were not always straightforward. Adam and Eve had Cain and Abel, and sibling rivalry led to Cain killing Abel. Abram and Sarah had no children, so Hagar, the slave girl, had Abram's son. When Sarah had Isaac, Hagar and Ishmael were sent away. Isaac and Rebekah had Jacob and Esau. Sibling rivalry led to Jacob tricking Esau out of his birthright and Rebekah helped to trick Isaac into giving Jacob Esau's blessing. Jacob was tricked by his uncle Laban into marrying Leah first, then having to work for him longer before he could marry Rachel. Sibling rivalry among Jacob's children led to Joseph being beaten up and sold as a slave. And that's just the book of Genesis. Families differ enormously. My niece was part of three blended families and refused the concept of stepbrother, stepsister, saying that as far as she was concerned, they were all her brothers and sisters. As we're brought into the family of God, because of God's father relationship with us, we're brought into a diverse richness of family relationships, the church globally, nationally and locally. So what does the family of God look like? Here are some thoughts, but it's clearly not an exhaustive list. You might be able to add to them. The family gatherings, big or small, focus on worshiping, praying and learning together, encouraging each other to stay close to God the Father and to his ways. 
Being family is essentially about relationships. In Paul's instructions to Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 5, Paul talks about respectful relationships within the church family. He says, don't correct an older man. Encourage him as you would your own father. Treat younger men as you would your own brother. And treat older women as you would your own mother. Show the same respect to younger women that you would to your sister. Take care of any widow who is really in need. In John chapter 13, verse 34, Jesus says to his disciples, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. So here's a picture of the church family supporting one another in love and through this being a witness for the world to see and hopefully to come to experience for themselves. Psalm 68 verse 6 says that God sets the lonely in families. The story of Ruth and Boaz is a great example of this and I'm sure we have plenty of modern day examples. The church family is great for welcoming people in to be mutually cared for and to establish a sense of belonging. There is a natural movement over time in families in terms of children being cared for by the adults and then those children growing up and becoming the ones providing the care for more elderly relatives. In the church family we see this too. Seasons of times when we give care and times when we receive care, not related necessarily to our ages. We can rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. The family of God includes all. Ohana is a Hawaiian term, and to quote the famous theologians Lilo and Stitch in Disney's 2002 film, Ohana means family, and family means nobody gets left behind or forgotten. All of us have a responsibility in this. If we spot someone a bit on the edge of things, we're to find ways of bringing them in. If we're feeling on the edge of things ourselves, let's find a way of letting someone know so that they can help to draw us in. No one will have been excluded intentionally. There will, of course, be some bumpy times in family relationships. There are bound to be, with different personalities and different views on things. But in the family of God, we need to be looking for ways of working them out and remaining committed to each other. In Romans chapter 12, Paul writes of love in action, which includes his words, live in harmony with one another. Let's find ways of accepting one another's abilities and differences, and let's draw alongside one another in our walk with God and the challenges we face individually and as church together. So, in COVID times, how can we maintain this family feel when we can't all be together physically? Over the last seven months, within our own household groups or by ourselves if we live alone, we've all had to find new ways of relating to our friends and extended family members as we've been limited by lockdown and restrictions. In some instances, I've heard of some families having more contact electronically than they ever used to have face to face before. In the same way as church, we have to find ways of being family without meeting up as we used to do. It's worth a reminder here that being the family of God is part of our identity. We are the family of God, whether we feel it or not. It's who we are. We still belong to God and to one another, even when we feel distanced and scattered. But of course, it's even better if we can maintain that feeling of connection and sense of belonging. 
So some thoughts for how we can and have been connecting together. And perhaps we can try and think of some new ones. So we've had, and we are having, online services and reflections. And these are not the same as the, the usual family gatherings. But it has been good to see familiar faces, receive teaching, join in worship, and keep journeying together, even though remotely. Prayer for each other and for our wider church family, such as for our mission partners. Prayer connects us, shows our love for each other, and keeps God central to it all. Zoom, I don't know about you, but I'd never heard of Zoom before March. But it's been handy for meetings and home groups and APRE church chats. Sending letters, cards, emails and texts to each other. Connecting on social media, making phone calls. Meeting up where we are allowed to, such as in parks in much smaller numbers. And we know that the pastoral care team have been meeting needs, taking people to hospital appointments, providing meals and so on. None of these are perfect solutions, but they do help us to stay connected in these difficult times. Please help us by letting us know if you are or others are in particular need, or have other ideas for us to try. And maybe we should make it our challenge this week to connect with someone from our church family in a way that we haven't yet since lockdown. We could send a card, make a phone call, or join the Apre Church Zoom later today. So, even in the ups and downs of COVID, let's celebrate and be thankful that we are the children of God and that he has placed us into his family, the church, with all that that means to us. Amen. Thank you, Susan. I know for me it's very special being part of God's family. As I look around at my brothers and sisters see this morning, I can see folk who've helped me along the way and encouraged me and are an encouragement to me as I just look at them here this morning. So God bless you all and thank you. And for those of you at home, uh, you've been an encouragement to me as brothers and sisters as well. So thank you for that. And I hope you feel that mutual oneness as being part of God's family, even though there's a distance between us, even though it's only on YouTube or Zoom. God bless you. And we pray that you'll continue being a blessing to you and to all of us through this morning. And in the weeks ahead. Jesus, uh, Jesus said that God is our Father, and Susan started by saying that God has brought us into his family. It's God who's brought us into his family. You have not chosen me, I've chosen you, said Jesus to his disciples, and that was God bringing us into his family, and we thank him for that. Our song this morning uh, talks about that, Father God I wonder. How I managed to exist without the knowledge of your parenthood and your loving care. I'm going to listen to that song now. Father God, I wonder how I managed to exist without the knowledge of your parenthood and your loving care.
gift of being able to give thanks to him, to sing his praises. You can do that wherever you happen to be, as long as, um, well, I guess, you've got to wear your mask, and we weren't singing here in church. I hope some of you were singing at home, and were able to sing out, but uh, let's sing praises to God throughout the week, whether in our hearts quietly, or maybe out loud. And we're going to continue with our prayers now. Phil is going to bring our prayers to us. Good morning, everyone. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we come at this time to offer our grateful thanks that you have welcomed us into your family as beloved children, and you have made us co-heirs with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. We recognise your mercy, your grace and favour to us. As your sons and daughters, we now offer to you our concerns and petitions. We pray for peace in this your world. We pray for your kingdom to come and for your will to be done. May your glory be known in the world that more and more people will come to acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour and that we may all come to know him more deeply. We ask, Lord, that those in positions of authority will make wise and just decisions based on the needs of others rather than from selfish motives. Especially in these times of crisis, we pray for your divine guidance. We thank you for your compassion. You never abandon your children. We pray for those in distress and anguish and sorrow today. Please come to them in their need. Grant them protection and give them your peace. Gracious God, give skill, sympathy and resilience to all who are caring for the sick and give your wisdom to those searching for cures. Strengthen them with your spirit that through their work many will be restored to health. Merciful God, we entrust to your tender care those who are ill or in pain, knowing that whenever danger threatens, your everlasting arms are there to hold them safe. Comfort and heal them. Restore them to health and strength. As we face the challenges of the weeks ahead, may we all go forward, trusting you and declaring the incredible life-changing good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. And the special prayer for today, the Collins. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us your gift of faith, that forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to that which is before, we may run the way of your commandments and win the crown of everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's say together in this room or at home the family prayer that Jesus did teach his disciples and to the, his church to us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining with us uh, this Sunday morning. It's short reflection time, but it's been great to be here. It's been great to be with you at home as well. Thank you for joining with us. As I said at the beginning, if you want to find out anything more about our church, uh, or if you just have to stumble across us on, on a YouTube site, our website is ChristChurchB29.org. If you want to ask us anything or be in touch, please uh, contact us by the contact details on the website. And now before we go, some words of blessing. To him 
who is able to keep us from falling and to keep us without blemish before the presence of his glory with the rejoicing to the only God our Saviour through Jesus Christ our Lord be glory, majesty, dominion and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen.